Welcome everybody out to Weird Wednesday for BalonyBrain.com. I am John House, or Use Toy, snowed in in Ohio. Joining me, not snowed in, is uh, Suburban Hobo or Daryl House. How you doing, Daryl? Oh, I just walked in off the tennis court. <laughs> and you're snowed in? I am. I, it was like, uh, you know, 77, 78 degrees this morning, it's beautiful sunshine. There was some red in the sky. You know what they say? Red skies in the morning and sailors take warning, but it went right away. It was gorgeous. Won a set, lost a set. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. You, you'll get some practice. Yeah. Hey, I got some good stuff today. You ready to get started? I am. You ready for a fart joke? <laughs> I, I'm always ready for uh, fart jokes. Okay. Well, here's the headline. Flatulent cows start fire at German dairy farm. <laughs> This is from Reuters that's out of Berlin. Methane gas from 90 flatulent cows exploded in a German farm shed on Monday, damaging the roof and injuring one of the animals. High levels of the gas had built up in the structure in the central German town of Rasdorf. Then a static electric charge caused the gas to explode with flashes of flame. Uh, one cow was treated for burns, a, a police spokesman added. So I think what they're looking at in Berlin right now is uh, hamburgers on the hoof. They're, they're going to have to add some Beano to their diet. Ooh, ah. <laughs> Well, I've got an almost entirely uh, funeral-based uh, stories today from Mechanicsburg, Ohio. An Ohio man's family is fulfilling his dying wish. They have uh, built a special coffin and made out of plexiglass and put him on his 1967 Electra Glide Cruiser uh, Harley Davidson. And uh, the embalmers worked with a metal back brace and straps to ensure that he's sitting upright. So he's being buried on his, uh, on his motorcycle in a see-through casket. Get your motor running. Head uh, out on the highway. Yeah, I saw that story. That was pretty interesting, actually. Uh, it was kind of weird, you know. I mean, the guys did the, the the big ape hangers and the whole nine yards. It it looks it looks pretty odd. You know what? It qualifies for being included on Weird Wednesday. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how about this one? This comes out of uh, one of the suburbs of Detroit. There, East Point, Michigan. A Syrian couple. Syrian, as from Syria. A Syrian couple has opened a Middle Eastern restaurant called The Bomb. <laughs> nice. <laughs> George and, and Raina Kassar thought the name might help draw customers to their business, but dishes like The Bomb Fajita might end up having the opposite effect. It's his idea. My husband's idea, Raina. I said, no, it's too much. It's, I feel like doing Edith here, Edith Bunker. <laughs> he's like, no, 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 I think it's going to be perfect. So they're like, when they eat something they really like, they go, wow, it's the bomb. So I mean, I kind of understand where he's coming from, but I just think everybody thinks it's a bad idea. The bomb will also serve certain American foods. It's a little bit scary. They think they're terrorists. Uh, Nabi Ayad from the Arab American Civil Rights League said, I think it's distasteful. I think it feeds into the stereotypes that are out there that somehow, some way, associate Arab Americans with bombs, destructive devices, or some sort of violence. I urge them really to reconsider the name. But a bunch of people have already taken to the social media to voice their displeasure. By the way, uh, one person said, that does seem like a really ill-conceived name for a Middle Eastern restaurant, unless they want to be on DHS watch lists. And then another, <laughs> and then another person said, it's probably only uh, a bad thing either if they, number one, add an ER to the end, so the bomb becomes the bomber, or number two, deliver in a van with their company name on it. Would you, would you like to have a, a van roll up in your driveway? This is the bomb. Uh, I, the I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be comfortable with that. Yeah, well, that's that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> well, on on another funeral, uh, I've, I've got another funeral story here. A uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Christopher Rivera Amaro, uh, for his funeral, he was shot to death uh, in San Juan, but they built a uh, a boxing ring, and they have him actually stood up with boxing with his uh, really? his his robe and his his boxing gloves. 
so jab, that, jab, and a big left hand? Yeah, the, the, so that people could, uh, you know, kind of mull around the ring with him posing. Uh, so it, it might make a little more sense if he was maybe a more successful boxer, but uh, the 23-year-old Rivera had a 5-15 and 15 record in the 130-pound weight class. A palooka. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> sure really boxing. Uh, he, he might have had more luck as, as maybe like a punching bag. Or a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> I, I, I like the grade, they felt like, like playing the rocket game. Da 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 da. Crazy, crazy people out there. It's, uh, you know, people are just dying to do these these funeral stories, huh? Well, it, it, the crazy. whole thing strikes me so weird to just have these people kind of posed in in real life. Uh, it is odd, you know, in in the middle of a of a cemetery to have something like that. I mean, I would think that it would almost detract from the solemnity of of the area. I agree. You know? Yeah. Hey, so speaking of solemn, did you see Joe Namath in his fur coat at the Super Bowl? I did. <laughs> well, can you imagine who took offense at that? I'm Say, guessing. PETA? I'm guessing. <laughs> well, former New York Jets quarterback Joe Namath messed up the coin flip at the Super Bowl, but it was what he was wearing at the time that has people upset. Namath arrived at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey wearing a mink fur coat that immediately got the people at PETA to take to Twitter, where they ended up requesting that the 70-year-old Hall of Famer donate the coat so that it could receive a proper burial. <sighs> As it turns out, Namus Coat might not have been mink after all, because according to Mark, uh, Mark Kaufman of Mark Kaufman Furs in New York, the fur was actually coyote with Norwegian fox trim, which is still fur from, from animals. Uh, so, I mean, you know, I, I, I pick my battles more carefully. I, I don't have a I don't have a dog in that fight. If you know so, I mean. so the people from from Pedo, they were fur from the truth. <laughs> ah, well, coyote is a bulky fur. You know, speaking of the coyote and the Norwegian fox, it's a bulky fur. And 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 uh, Mark, uh, what's it? Mark Coppin said that's the way it's going to look, and it's going to keep you warm. He just wanted to have something new that looked bright and sharp. I think the white made the statement. Coppin likely knows what he's talking about when it comes to Namath because there's a picture of Broadway Joe posing in a fur coat on the front page of Kaufman's website. Nice. Ah, well, so what else got? Amanda Engel. Arrested for allegedly spitting on cops' pizza. <laughs> a Pizza Hut manager in Irwin, Tennessee, was arrested after adding a secret ingredient to uh, the pizza that was being made for a uh, sheriff's deputy, Frank Rogers. He uh, he actually, you know, if you're going to do something like this, I would just guess that probably you don't want to actually do it in front of the police officer. Yeah. But she did and was arrested for uh, 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 for something, she was uh, expectorating on a pizza. Well, <laughs> she she apparently was still a re uh, mad over an arrest recently that she had um, for a DUI for letting a friend who was drunk drive her car, which is the same as a DUI charge under Tennessee law. She spent two days in jail for that and paid a three hundred and fifty dollar fine she uh she was um i'm guessing like i don't know stupid disorderly conduct that's what she was arrested oh, yeah, for disorderly conduct well i like a pizza with pepperoni mushrooms and expectorant <laughs> <laughs> no oh, sounds gross so, well, listen, folks, uh, I guess we're going to wrap it up here for another Wednesday on uh, Baloney Brain. Our weird Wednesdays just, you know, I, I, we, we dredge the depths of humanity to come up with these funny stories. We're glad that you joined us. We're glad you enjoy them also. You, Toy, you have a good one, my friend. Well, I, I just let me add, when I pass, I'm going to have, like, a computer put in front of me, and I'll have, like, everybody just so that we can keep doing weird Wednesdays. Well, you know, when I pass, I want to be like those cows in, in <laughs> Germany and pass gas. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. See ya.